Welcome back to another episode of Low Budget Binge on M.L. Miller Frights. This is M.L. Miller. And Low Budget Binge is where I take a look at films that were made for the cheap, released under the radar, or from smaller companies, or otherwise might be missed if you only pay attention to the big budget releases. I made another improvement to that logo up there. Check it out. I think it's coming along nicely. This week I have five more indie films, some to seek out and some to steer clear from. Here we go. Ouija Shark. It's a scant budgeted schlocker with what seems to be good intentions, but really doesn't have the creativity or the money to carry off most of its ideas. The shark looks like a squeeze toy you get out of a claw machine at a carnival. And that could be played for laughs and made into something kind of fun. But none of that is really put into the script. It's nice to see normal looking gals starring in this one. Usually we have the playboy models or runway models for these types of shows. So it's nice to see girls that you might actually see walking down the street. The ghost of the shark haunting a group of vacationers who happen upon a Ouija board floating in the water isn't a horrendous premise. I think someone with some creativity could make it work. Instead of focusing on the horror though, the film insists on giving us multiple musical sequences with bad music and gals in bathing suits. Sure, that's groovy, but that's not why I seek out shark films. At least try to scare me. This is one of those cases where I think they should have either waited and opted for more money to put into this movie, or just not made it at all, sadly. Those who feel the need to check this one out can on demand and digital download. Next up is The Clearing, which premiered on Crackle a few days ago. When there is no more room on the zombie movie rack, zombie films began taking the Romero route and started attempting to make the undead a metaphorical representation of some kind of social issue. I love those films, but sometimes I long for the straight-up, no-nonsense zombie films about a bunch of zombies and a few survivors who try not to get eaten. While it isn't without its own thematic heft, The Clearing is pretty much direct and to-the-point action from beginning to end as a vacationing father played by a rugged Liam McIntyre must stand alone against a horde of zombies that have encircled his mobile home in order to find his daughter lost in the surrounding woods. McIntyre lends quite a bit of leading man gruff as he desperately tries over and over to get out of his predicament and find his estranged daughter. Sure, the zombies represent the gulf between a father and a daughter he is having difficulties connecting with, but while that's going on, you get some intense and exciting zombie action. It's not that deep, but it's entertaining from beginning to end. Seven Stages to Achieve Eternal Bliss, available on demand, digital download, and was just posted streaming on Tubi, is a twisted and dark comedy starring Being Human's Sam Huntington, Garfunkel and Oates' Kate Micucci, and everyone's favorite New Zealand director Taika Waititi. Waititi plays an LA cult leader who kills himself in his bathtub and instructs his followers to take their own lives in the very same place. That place happens to be in the new apartment Huntington and Micucci rents for their new home in LA. On their first night, one of the cult members breaks in and kills himself in their tub. This is followed by more cult members doing the same. The problem is that the cultists are very bad at killing themselves, and as the couple try to deal with their new living situation, they decide the best thing to do is help out the cultists carry out their final act. Soon Huntington and Mikuchi find themselves wrapped up in the cult themselves, leading to both of them finding much needed purpose in their lives. This is a comedy as black as they come, but the jokes and fun performances almost make you look past the dire subject matter. I didn't find myself realizing how dark this film was until the very end. Having been close to some who have taken their own lives, this film kind of hit me, and I think if you've experienced suicide in your life, you might feel the same. So I will give this one a trigger warning. But there is a surprisingly uplifting tone to all of this self-murder, played out by some very talented comedic actors. Huntington and Mikuchi have impeccable comic timing, 
and work off of each other in a manner that immediately makes you root for this couple to get past their problems and live happily ever after. Dan Harmon plays a cop investing all of these deaths, who is more interested in quitting his job and becoming a full-time screenwriter. This does take place in LA, you know. And Better Call Saul's Rhea Seahorn adds some great scenes to this one as well. Filled with cameos and gags coming at you a mile a minute, Seven Stages to Achieve Eternal Bliss is infectiously fun, but deals with subject matter that I think might rub some people the wrong way, so proceed with caution. Also released on demand and digital download this week is The Dinner Party, a story about a newlywed couple, one of them an ambitious screenwriter, who are invited to a dinner party to hobnob with some giants in the industry. Once the party begins, though, it's apparent that they are meant to be the main course and their hosts are high society cannibals. This film is in desperate need of an editor, as it's almost two hours long, and that's a difficult task to endure. A good 45 minutes could be shaved off to make a much slicker and watchable version of The Dinner Party. On top of that, the film is nowhere as classy and intellectual as it desperately wants to come off as. The writer-director's star, Miles Doliak, gives every character numerous discourse-laden monologues describing and debating operas, fine cuisine, liquors, music, and even a lengthy discussion of every card in the tarot deck. Not one, but every one of them. While writers like Tarantino can get away with these diatribes because he makes even these tangents interesting and essential in making the character feel more fully developed, Doliak sadly is no Tarantino. If you're going to change the subject and go off course, one should at least make the story interesting and worth following. Sadly, none of these little nods to upper crust society are. On top of that, the characters revel in their evilness, twirling imaginary mustaches and speaking slowly because... I guess that's supposed to make them scary. Some decent action comes way too late in the game, and I feel most people will have checked out long before the final bloody course is served. Have you ever been trapped in a party that you desperately wanted to leave? That's how I felt five minutes into the dinner party. Let's end this one on a higher note, though. Confessional is a mystery thriller filmed in first-person POV that premiered on Shudder recently. Most of the film takes place in a confessional box, the typical little room you see in all of the reality shows. I'm not a big fan of those shows, but I think if you are, Confessional is going to be right up your alley. The mystery involves the death of two vastly different students that appear to be accidental and not connected. But seven students are gathered and blackmailed into confessing what they know about the murders, and it turns out that they are all part of a pretty intricate and intriguing plot involving voyeurism, obsession, power, betrayal, and lies. Most of the seven actors are strong, especially the drug dealer with the heart of gold, Annalisa Cochran, and Jessica Bohr, who has a gruff yet sincere attitude. Sure, the film plays out like a bunch of acting students reciting monologues to the camera, which gives it a kind of vapid and self-important vibe, but I really admire the technical skill it took to edit all of these clips together, as well as the storytelling might to weave this intricate little mystery into one cohesive story. I liked Confessional a lot more than I thought I would, given my dislike of reality TV. That'll be it for Low Budget Binge this week on ML Miller Frights. If you dug what you just watched, please give this video a like down below. Share it with your buddies across social media, and please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Big things are brewing for ML Miller Frights, and I have a big announcement coming soon. Until then, I thank you for your time and attention, and take care. Stuck inside your reality Your doom Oh, your doom Your